Hi, it's Ursula from Ursula-Smith.com and today I am just back with a quick tip. Um, I did another video in which I took a printout that started as um, either a jelly print or uh, distress oxide resist print or you know any anything really. Um, printed it out on the computer, scanned it in and then printed it out on the computer and then I went over it, the printout with the Distress Collage Medium, the crazing version. I love this stuff. Um, I think it might not be being made anymore, and I'm so sad because I think I just love it. Um, in any event, it um, adds those little tiny crackles, and so... Um, in the other video, I went over it with more of like antiquing colors, like the browns and antique linens. But I did want to just point out that you could, in this case, I used, um, I still used antique linen uh, in some of the lighter areas. Uh, but I also, for the dark, where you see those crackles show up dark, that was just using iced spruce. So you can use colors. It doesn't always have to be um, dark browns and that sort of thing. And then the other idea that I do a lot is um, I try to save edges. And what I mean by that is I'm trying to see it. If the camera will focus. See right here? That was printed that way. So I try to leave edges like that so it almost looks, in this case, almost like a transfer, you know, where some of the paper didn't take or some of the print didn't take. Um, sometimes I, u I use, um, like, edges in Photoshop to even cut that uh, using um, different techniques from watercolor edges. But in this case, the print was you know, just like that. And rather than blow it up to fill out the entire piece of cardstock, I left just a hint of that raw edge. And so that's just another idea when you're playing around in Photoshop uh, for prints that you're going to make cards from. Sometimes it's nice, nice to leave that, um, you know, that little raw edge that makes it look, um, especially in something like this, which was from a jelly print and kind of looks almost like it was transferred. So, and then I did the same thing with the crackle, um, brought in some dark browns to really highlight that crazing. So anyway, if you are playing around with printouts, that's just another couple ideas for you. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. And I'm back with another quickie, um, just quick, uh, fix for boo-boos. Um, so in this case, this was a um, card front that I've been working on. I did the Distress Oxide Resist, and I have tons of videos on that, how to do that on my blog um, or YouTube channel. Um, I ended up scanning it into the computer because I really liked how it came out so that I can do multiple print multiples. So especially when I'm working on things that are bulk where, you know, I'm doing like Christmas cards or things like that, um, a lot of times I'll scan in nice prints, print them out, and then many times I'll go over it with some kind of medium. In this case, it was Distress Collage Medium, um, the crazing version. And I like that because it gives you just little hints of crackle. So even though it's printed on the computer, it still has... And it started from a handmade piece. Um, it definitely ends up with more of a handmade piece rather than looking like something that just came off the printer. Um, in any event, this was the the design from the stencil was, and this was just a Yupo paper, a uh, couple of pieces that I glued together, cut from a um, uh, Tim Holt stencil. And I went back in, I wanted just a little bit more blue. So I went back in with just plain Distress Ink and a brush through the stencil. But 
I think actually I didn't scan it in. I think I actually took a picture of it. And so when I went in, it was a little wonky from, you know, because it was curled and whatever. So in Photoshop, I stretched it to make it square. And that actually, uh, the design ends up off kilter a little bit from my original stencil. So I had to line it up a couple of times, but I missed spots. Now, here's the good thing about taking prints and running a um, medium, acrylic medium over it. Uh, it will make lifting off ink um, easier. So I can go in and just spritz some, some water down, pick it up with a brush, and then I can go in in any place where I was off kilter, I can just paint that away to soften that. Now, sometimes going off kilter is kind of a good thing because it looks like a shadow, but in this case, I, it was only in a couple of spots and I didn't really want to leave it that way. So I can go in and touch it up and my boo-boos are gone. So anyway, just a quick tip. If you're using acrylic mediums or didn't think of it on a printed piece of paper, that is one nice thing um, that allows you a little more workability with water-based medium after you basically seal it with um, something like the collage medium. So the other thing that you can do with uh, printouts and 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 it doesn't have to be on printouts. Um, the re the reason I do it on printouts is, th especially with the distress inks, um, and de especially depending on what paper you're using, coming back over with anything wet, even an acrylic medium, can reactivate the ink and make it smudge or run. So if I've got something that I really want to protect, a lot of times I'll scan it in, print it, like I said, and then distress um, collage medium over it or, or some other gel medium. Um, and then we, I could do the technique where I brought the ink in to darken the shadows, but you can also take something like a crayon and add some highlights. So if I want to punch up the white areas a little bit, I can do that. I can either smudge it or I could bring I can bring a little bit of water into it and let it float a little bit more, pounce it out. And, and what that allows me to do is punch up some of the areas. I mean, I could do this in Photoshop as well, but I, I find sometimes trying to do things like this, it's, it's a little... Um, artificial or stilted in Photoshop, whereas this you kind of get this serendipitous flowing of paints and inks and crayons in this case. Um, and then again, if I wanted to, depending on you know, if I want to use this in bulk, I could go then rescan this in um, and then kind of start all over again. So a lot of times, you know, uh, it's kind of like a yin yang thing. I, I kind of go back and forth um, with a lot of my work. So um, so anyway, if you're into digital printing um, like I am, you can start, obviously start with a handmade thing, print it out, and then continue to do work on it with your uh, acrylic and inks and um, paints and all of that kind of stuff. So anyway, uh, just another idea. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Mm -hmm.